Day 38 to the quarantine reviews. Edmund's heading for tomorrow, today, with Gamma Ray. Got a bit of an older one for you this time around, with an album that originally came out in 1990, and the anniversary edition, which I've got here, came out in 2015. It was the debut album for Gamma Ray, and is a true blue heavy metal album. I'll only be covering the main body because the anniversary edition, which has a bonus CD, is just demo versions and the EP versions of the tracks that are on CD1. I gotta be honest here, this was a bit of a boring sit for me because it felt very indicative of the time. It didn't feel identifiably as Gamma Ray. Like, if you listen to some of their later stuff, you're able to really pick up on how they're different in the genre, but this just felt very typical of the 90s heavy metal sound. Now you might argue that that's because it's their debut album, they're just, find they're just finding themselves. However, I dare you to argue that Kill 'Em All by Metallica is not identifiably Metallica's sound, or that Iron Maiden's eponymous album is not them. It's nothing to do with it being a debut, it's got everything to do with how confident you are in what you're crafting. As such, the closest I really came to having a favourite on this album was Space Eater. Whilst it did still sound very stock in terms of music, it has a very standard guitar and drum progression. It's not especially um, inspired in that regard. It did give me something a bit more to work with lyrically. If even just on a basis of questioning what the bloody hell it was about. Like, the, the verses and chorus seem incredibly at odds with each other. There doesn't seem to be a clear through line with them. But, I would rather be confused by a song than utterly bored. On the least favourite side of things, there's free time, and that song really did irritate me, because it felt like it was just checking off a checklist. Singing about meeting up with your girl. Check! Singing about partying hard. Check! Singing about having more time to do so. and having a raucous guitar style that sounds like a party anthem. Check and double check. In fact, this song was so tedious, so boring, that it's probably even more boring than hearing me talk about how boring the song is. It brings nothing to the table, and even for the context of the time, it brought nothing to the table. Heading for Tomorrow ultimately suffers for being exemplary of a band who has a lot of influences from the rock scene around them, but no definitive sound of their own. Ultimately, it can be appreciated in its historical context for how the band got started, but can pretty much be skipped. You won't be missing out on not listening to it. If you want to hear the band in their true sound and how they properly evolved and developed and improved, listen to albums like Somewhere Out in Space, where they properly got into the power metal sound and you really get a sense of identity from them 
and they get to showcase their true talents. Heading for Tomorrow gets a 2 out of 5. I have no idea why All Music gave a 4 out of 5. What were you thinking? That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, and with any luck, we will be heading for tomorrow.